Well, happy Monday, all you fabulous freight masters out there. Um, some of you have reached out to me over the weekend, and I promise I will get caught up with you today. Um, I ended up losing power uh, for, I don't know, nine hours or something like that over the weekend. We had a really bad uh, windstorm. Uh, so, but I'm not in a hurricane area, right? So, uh, that being said, uh, we'll go ahead and jump into uh, today's video. So the U.S. Uh, the Gulf Coast ports are slamming U.S. tariffs on Chinese container cranes. I almost don't want to read this, um, but I'll go over this. Uh, looming tariffs on Chinese manufactured container cranes will significantly increase prices and could impact future projects at ports across the Gulf Coast, according to port officials. In July, Port Houston approved the purchase of eight electric ship-to-shore container cranes for more than $113 million, the largest order in port's history. The cranes are being manufactured by Zhenhua Heavy Industries Company, a Chinese-based state-owned company and the world's largest manufacturer of container cranes, accounting for over 70% of the world market. Under tariffs on Chinese imports initiated by the Biden administration in May, which I, I don't know that that's necessarily true, but because uh, I, I believe Trump was trying to do that during the uh, during his administration, but correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the eight container cranes could be subject to an extra 25% duty, significantly raising the pri their price, according to Port Houston CEO Charlie Jenkins. Ship to shore cranes are used for loading and unloading containers and are considered critical for port productivity. At this time, we are not certain the eight ship to shore cranes awarded in July are susceptible to the tariff, but if so, we estimate the cost to be $28.5 million, Jenkins uh, said in an email. The eight cranes purchased are a critical part of our capital investment plan to grow capacity one step ahead of forecast and demand and support the expected larger vessels to Houston with a comp completion of Project 11. Project 11 is a $1.1 billion expansion of the Houston Ship Channel, which will allow the channel to accommodate the additional 1,400 vessels per year and could generate up to $134 billion more annually in economic impact once completed by 2028. Jenkins said the 25% tariff on Chinese manufactured cranes will not have an impact on Project 11, but it is known if unknown if other projects could be delayed. Along with Port Houston, the Port of Freeport and Southeast Texas could see an additional $6 million in costs on two container cranes it ordered from China-based manufacturers because of the 25% tariff. The Port of New Orleans, which is expanding and planning a $1.8 billion Louisiana International Terminal said the tariffs could have significant impact on projects, budget, and viability. The LIT, which will be considered, will be capable of handling 2 million 20 foot equivalent units annually in ultra large container vessels aimed to position New Orleans as one of the top international container gateways in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, the U.S. Trade Representative announced the tariff increases in May on an array of Chinese imports, including ship-to-shore cranes, electric vehicles, lithium-ion EV vehicles, steel and aluminum, uh, semiconductor chips, solar cells, and medical products. In response to China's unfair trade practices and to counteract the resulting harm, uh, President Biden is directing his trade representative to increase tariffs under Section 301 of the Trade Act of 1974 on $18 billion of imports from China to protect American workers and businesses. All right? Again, isn't this something that Trump tried to do during his administration? But again, correct me if I'm wrong. The USTR said in a news release, Port Authorities uh, terminal operators and in industry groups across the U.S. immediately pushed back against the tariff on ship-to-shore container cranes. Uh, the American Association of Port Authorities sent a letter jointly with, <clears throat> excuse me, with major ports from across the country to U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai 
in July urging her to, her to reconsider the tariff on cranes. Simply put, the APA is confident that the tariff, if imposed, will not meet its stated objectives. Uh, Carrie Davis, head of AAPA, wrote in the letter, instead, it will only result in negative outcomes, including grave harm to port efficiency and capacity, strained U uh, supply chains, increased consumer prices, and a weaker U.S. economy. I'm already getting upset. Uh, last month, and I'll explain why here shortly. Last month, Thai announced that Chinese-made ship to shore cranes ordered prior to May 14, 2024, and cranes that enter the U.S. port to May 14, 2026 would be excluded from the tariffs. The ruling helped Port Houston save duty fees on three ship to shore cranes it recently received from Chinese manufacturers, but the port still faces import tariffs for the eight cranes it ordered in July. The bottom line is we're working very diligently on this issue um, with a number of our stakeholders, Jenkins said, during the Port Houston Commission meeting September 24th. We will continue to work to exempt these cranes and find opportunities to do so. It is a big financial burden. AAPA commented Ty's decision. AAPA and port officials noted that one of the major issues with the tariff is that there is currently no U.S. manufactured ship to shore cranes. Now, I actually looked that up. Uh, I actually looked up U.S. port cranes. I did not look up ship to shore cranes. Uh, I probably should have Googled that. That's partly my bad. But uh, now our organization continues to encourage the Biden administration and Congress to thoughtfully consider long-term uh, alternatives, AAPA said. Until there is an American manufacturer, USTR should not impose tariffs on cranes that do nothing more than tax port development. In July, Finland-based crane manufacturer Cone Cranes announced plans to begin building port cranes in the U.S. The company builds cranes for the U.S. market from a factory in China. Uh, Cone Cranes, or Cone Cranes, however you're supposed to say that, expects the network to grow in states including Ohio, Virginia, Wisconsin in the coming years, and has received initial indications of interest from a number of uh, customers, the company said in a news release. Cone Cranes will not provide a timeline on when it would open a factory in the U.S. Okay, now that I've read that, why are we not making these here? Right? Why are we not making the semiconductors and everything else that the U.S. made products don't need tariffs? Right? I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. That we have we have become a consumer country. If you if, if you look at it, we we truly have. We we barely manufacture anything anymore. Right? For some of you newer generations, if you look. It's hard to not buy something that has been made in China, um, and whether it's strictly produced in China or it's the parts are built there and then shipped here and we assemble it, right? Uh, it, it, you're right. It does have a large impact on our economy. But if we start to manufacture the, everything here again, right, and become the manufacturing powerhouse that we once were, won't be no problem, right? At least in my mind, um, I, I I don't I, I say tariff. I, I I give a damn about you know. Oh, it's going to cost us an extra twenty eight. Well, let's do something about it. Let's start manufacturing these these things here, right? I'm a little upset. Maybe I'm not articulating you know all of this quite the way that I should, but it sort of pees me off a little bit that we're not making more products here that we're so self-reliant on other countries right and not that i have anything against other countries it's just the simple fact that you know we we don't we, we lose jobs right uh even customer service jobs i went through this thursday right trying to talk to it about issues and it literally, it sounded like I had to call in twice. The second time was literally word for word. They went over the same. I said, wait a minute, hold the phone. 
you're going to make me do this and this and this and this. Yep. Well, stop reading from your script because it didn't work the first time. It's probably not going to work this time, right? Not to mention the language barrier. What are we doing? Start making stuff in the U.S. again. All right? I'm out.